If you have annoying squeaks in the floor in your home, no worries, we are able to fix that easily and without you noticing it from the top down with the Squeak No More Kit. Squeak No More Kit can work on carpet, hardwood floors, linoleum, just about anything. It comes with the carpet tool, the bit that you're gonna need to drill down and screw in any of these fasteners to the floor, a hardwood and softwood tool, and also 50 of the special screws that are going to snap off in the perfect section. We're gonna go through this and show you how we're gonna fix a carpeted floor first, then we'll go through softwood and hardwood. In order to fix this squeak in your floor, it could be the joist or the screw that's causing the squeak. It could be the two floorboards moving together, or it could be some linoleum that's sitting up on top and just moving around. We need to first be able to find that squeak and find the joist. And to do so, we're gonna use the tool that comes along with this kit. It's basically a long screw, but it's only threaded at the bottom. You're gonna to wanna to put that in your drill. And when you do, it's pretty short up front. I found that if I put it out towards the end of my drill, it would center itself nice. Make sure that when you turn it on, it's not wobbling or in there at a weird angle. This is pretty simple. As we drill down, the threads are going to take us through the board. We'll do this here. And then if we hit the joist, we'll notice that when we go in reverse, it should back out. You can see here that we're just spinning. And I did this multiple times in our carpet and I used a tape measure to try to sort of figure out where the joists were. It didn't work, but this tool worked perfectly. You'll never see what's left of it because the hole is going to be underneath and this goes right through the carpet without issue. Once you actually do find a joist, you're going to be able to screw this in and you will hear it not only in the drill, but you'll also notice that it will pop right back out without issue. So now once we know where the joist is, we're able to move on to the next step. The next step, we chuck the bit that comes with the kit that is very important because it has a collar on it that's going to stop us from driving these screws too deep. Now we need to use the screws also that come with the kit because not only do they have different threads on the bottom than the top that's going to help sandwich things together as the threads in the bottom are gonna pull the screw down faster than the ones at the top. That's gonna to allow us to sandwich this without the head of the screw. They're also scored right here. So when we go to break them off, they're gonna sit just a bit underneath the wood. That's going to ensure that we don't see it or step on it and also ensure that it's holding everything down properly. You have this kit for carpet or linoleum. This points are going to be able to push through the carpet and you're gonna be able to hold that down. That's gonna ensure that it's the right level. If you are doing this on a professional basis, you can also get a metal type holder. This is going to obviously last longer and be something a little bit more for the professional. It's also a little bit more expensive, but once you use this kit once, you realize that you could use it in multiple places and make some money off this. So that is available. So we're just gonna push that down on the carpet and then screw in the screw. And it's very, very simple. I'm gonna show you here on the jig so you can see a little bit more of what's happening. We are using this like we are on linoleum. So we have some wood that's moving around here. We're just gonna use this jig, go in. We don't have to go fast. We just have to push down slightly, but we're gonna make sure that this is pushed down like it was on carpet. Get to the bottom where we can't screw anymore. Pull this guy off. There is a place in one of the legs where you just come over and grab the head of the screw. Now we just wanna rock and that will pull out. Now, if you're pulling that out in carpet, there is a little ledge here. So you wanna be careful that you don't grab any of that carpet when you pull, but then here we are sitting below. Now on this linoleum, it didn't grab because it is sitting below this. And that is something that I think is a little bit important to note. If you are needing to pull this floor that's above on linoleum down, you kinda of have to not go quite as deep and that is something that is a finesse most times this squeak is not going to be an easy fix but let me show you here 
if we move forward just slightly, and I think this is something that you almost have to test out. As you go down, you need to watch that score and then pull up on your subfloor. And you're not going to be able to do that in the air. You're going to have to want to make sure that squeak has gone away. And once you've watched that score go below your linoleum, you can then take and break this off. Now that's a little bit more advanced than what you know, is, this is meant for. But if you're going to do that, just make sure that you watch that score that's right there and make sure that this will go below the linoleum and it will hold this in place without issue. That tells you how well this works. Depending on how bad your squeak is, you might have to put in two or three of these screws to fix it completely. It all depends on what is actually happening. If you have to grab one side of the floorboard and then the other to make sure that they're both down tight so they don't move up and down. Just kind of feel your way through the floor and see if you've removed that squeak. For me on the carpet, I put in four and it has been absolutely perfect since. Now there's a little bit of a difference when you're using softwood. Softwood floors like pine or anything like that, you're actually going to want to pre-drill. And you can use a eighth inch bit in a paper clip to find the joist if you had to and then fill them up. But sometimes you can use a stud finder, find the joist. There's a lot of ways that you should probably try to measure because you don't want to mess up these floors that much. We're going to back this guy off a bit and show you if we just drill down here quickly with this eighth inch drill bit. We know that we found the stud there. We're going to skip finding it. We're going to pull out this hardwood floor kit and then we'll use a screw and we're going to use a screw in the top section. We're going to get that screw started here in the hole. And we're going to use this jig. Again, we're always using the bit that came with it. And we're going to screw it down until it doesn't screw anymore. And there we go. This guy, and you can always walk over your floor to make sure that that squeak is gone. Then there's the place that grabs the head here. You're going to put it on and just rock slightly. And once you rock back and forth, it will break off. You're going to want to be careful because it's going to break off under the floor. That's something that you don't want to have this stuff pull up. And then this wasn't on. You can see how tightly this actually attaches, which is pretty amazing. So it's going to have some good force to pull stuff down. And if you needed to put one or two in, no big deal, a little bit of putty over that and it would be perfect. Now, if we were going to do hardwood floors, there is another difference. And we would again pre-drill. We would use a different section, which is going to be this middle area. We're going to start this screw in the hole. Still use the bit that came with it. This time we're going to drill this in. And this bit is going to snap basically upon the torque that's played where that score is. So we're going to just keep going until this bit snaps. And that just snapped off and our piece of hardwood is firmly attached down. That is pretty amazing when you look at what this will do and how tightly this will get this connected. This is just one screw. All we'd have to do here is then fill that in a little bit with some wood putty and you'll never know that's there. I know while I was doing this, I always questioned how much holding power you had basically between the two different thread sizes. And this is amazing. I mean, obviously I pulled the softwood off a little bit easier because that is softer wood, but we have one screw that is holding this oak in. And it basically stayed in the oak rather and pulled out of the softwood. But I mean, that's pretty amazing that you can have this one piece hold that tightly. 
Now, since this is a scored screw, there are possibilities that you could drive this in, hit a knot, hit something, and that scored screw could break prior to getting down too deep. And I just wanna show you, this is a simple solution. If you had this sticking up because something accidentally happened, you could have twisted. Lots of things could happen, but very slim. All you gotta do is take a set of vice grips. You could do this with pliers, but vice grips would allow you to turn and get on the edge with pliers. You, know, you can do multiple things here. We're just gonna turn this, lock it down, all we have to do is unscrew this guy out. Very simple, very easy to do, and the chances of this happening are slim to none. But if that were to happen, that's all you would do, and then you could get this screw piece out. This works great. I attest to it, I've used it at the cabin a lot. I, this has been a lifesaver for me to go through and just get things. My situation is all out of carpet. I've just learned that I could mess with it a little bit, change things up slightly for linoleum if I needed to, and then watch how much this really can hold. Even with the hardwood floors, that's amazing. And covering it up is no issue. On carpet, this is you know, down deeper. You'll never feel it. You'll never even know it's there. Things that you should watch out for. If you are exploring with this screw, don't go down too far because you could have electrical lines, water lines, anything underneath there. So be smart where you're at. If you're in a bathroom, really think about what's happening so that you're not getting into water that could be going across. This can obviously puncture copper if you pushed hard enough. But other than that, this is pretty simple and good for any person who's in DIY slow down, be smart with it if you don't have the experience, but most people are gonna fly through this and have this job done very quickly and very easily. I'll put a link in the description to this kit. It's pretty sweet and it works quite well. I appreciate you hanging out with me going through this. If you need anything, ask some questions below. I'll be happy to answer them. Give us a like in this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.